Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of my F550 build. Uh, I've managed to get all the parts I need now. Uh, I've been waiting on my Futaba R208SB receiver, which has finally come. Uh, it took over a week to come, so I was a bit disappointed with that. My uh, XT60 connectors have come, and I've already soldered the uh, male ones onto my 4-cell uh, LiPos. Uh, and also, uh, this is my new carbon fibre landing gear, which uh, came in parts, and uh, you had to build. It only took about two minutes, literally, to build, but it's made out of some really nice carbon fibre, and uh, it's very light. In fact, I was surprised how light this was actually uh, going to be. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description if you want to have a look at these. Um, definitely worth having a look at though so far anyway I haven't tested them with a flight so we'll see how that goes but yeah uh, I seem to like these a lot and I think Jim does as well I like it a lot yeah just as I thought Jim likes it too so let's carry on with the build guys so this is as far as I got in my uh, last video and as you've seen I never got a chance to put on my XT60 connectors so uh, I'm just quickly going to do that uh, ideally uh, you should have your connectors and put them on first and then solder it onto the board so don't do it this way around it's just that I didn't have these uh, ready to go on okay so a quick bit of soldering uh, managed to get that on and then we put a little bit of heat shrink on there so that's nice and uh, tidy okay next thing to do is to grab our NASA and stick it on the board so we're going to take our NASA and uh, it's going to face with the motor points, these are the points on here that say M1 all the way up to M6, uh, that's going to be the front. So uh, we know the front of our copter is the red parts here, so it will be mounted with the M parts facing front and then we're going to go, uh, we're going to plug the motors in uh, going this way around, it's going to be motor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, uh, you'll see that on the uh, NASA. Uh, assistance software that you will download when we're programming but uh, this is how it goes so we'll put motor 1 into M1 now these can only go in one way so don't worry about uh, putting it in the wrong way there's a little tab on these leads so as I say it only goes in one way so motor 1 motor 2 this will be motor 3 let's just move that out of the way so on and that's how you have it 1 to 6 1 to 6 and that will be mounted directly in the middle of our bottom plate facing forwards with the motor points facing forwards okay so what you're going to do is uh, get the two servo cables that are on the uh, LED unit here now the one that comes out of the top and has four uh, pins in it is the LED unit so that goes into the uh, top horizontal piece on the NASA and the one that's uh, also connected to that goes into the X3 on the NASA which is on the right hand side there okay next thing I'll do is get my uh, Futaba radio uh, the reason I'm using this uh, is because I already have a Futaba T8J and uh, I like it and also I can use the S-Bus connection for this which makes it very easy to uh, install. I haven't got to do it the, tra the traditional way, sticking in lots and lots of uh, servo uh, cables. So in the NASA box you do get uh, a bag full of cables so just take one of them out. Just take one of these out, we'll stick it into the uh, horizontal piece on the bottom which is the uh, S-Bus connection and then we will plug that into the NASA on the X2 port. And that's our radio connected. As I say it's so much simpler than the uh, traditional method of having to stick all of these cables in as well so it's my preferred method
Okay, so before we uh, close it up and put the lid on the top, uh, we need to bind our new receiver to my Futaba T8J. Uh, to do this, we're going to turn on the radio. Once the radio is ready, we'll uh, plug in a lipo. Uh, this isn't going to be the flight lipo, this is just a free yes that I uh, happen to have right now. Uh, so let's plug it in. It should initialize. And it should flash fast because there's no. Uh, yeah, that's the fail safe mode. So uh, let's hold the uh, button down on the bind until we get a solid LED, which we have. And now you can see this is uh, flashing down here slower. We've got the solid there to, to say we are connected to our radio. I'm just going to quickly power cycle this to make sure everything's okay. So I'll unplug, leave it for a second, and plug back in. As you can see, we're flashing and we've still got our solid green, so we are ready to uh, move on to the next step, which is on the computer. Okay, so what you need to do is go to the DJI website and download the uh, NASA Assistant for the NASA M. Make sure you don't download anything else, like for the Wukong or for the Phantom, because it won't work. You need the one for the NASA M that's uh, a standalone assistance. Uh, once you do that, you can uh, get your USB cable, which comes with the uh, NASA uh, itself and install that into the uh, LED module at the bottom you'll see a USB port there and then the other end goes straight into your PC okay so as you can see I've got the power going in and then the uh, LED unit with the USB going up into my laptop uh, what you'll need to do is download uh, the uh, driver for the uh, USB otherwise uh, it won't work which is what I've just done here installed the driver so it recognizes when you plug it in. So I'll just press finish, close it. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna uh, calibrate my radio uh, by clicking start calibration. And we're gonna move uh, the sticks to all their uh, endpoints as we did uh, when we installed the Futaba onto the Phantom. Once we've done that, we click finish. That's our new endpoint end set. Now you can see here as I put the throttle up it comes down and when it goes down it goes up. What you need to do is reverse that. So now when I put my throttle up it actually throttles up rudder to the right. And then we have our elevator. Just push down, goes to the left. And our aileron left and right. So that all works and so does our GPS switch on the bottom um, you can switch between GPS, attitude and manual uh, but it doesn't show up GPS at the moment because I haven't got a GPS unit plugged in if you need to change any of these just go to your radio's endpoints and uh, adjust the endpoint uh, until you get the slider into the position that you want. Uh, the basic gains that I'm going to be using at the moment uh, is going to be uh, 160 uh, on the pitch, uh, 160 on the roll, the yaw I'm going to do at about 125 and I'll leave the vertical at 130. Uh, you can leave the remote gains at I and H, which is inhibited. Uh, the attitude gains, I'm going to turn down to about 100. That's on pitch and roll. This is just uh, personal preference. And I'm going to click right, which uh, writes it all into the NASA. So let's do a quick test and make sure we got all our motors in the. Uh, right way, so they're spinning the right way. I'll uh, unplug the NASA. I'll just do a quick power cycle. Okay, so once you unplug from the NASA, uh, we can start our first, or try our first start up. So I'll do the uh, on the motors. 
as you can see they turned off so they seem to be working fine Now we need to check the motor's rotation to make sure they're all going in the uh, correct order. Uh, so let's uh, do that. Okay, so to check the motor's rotation, it's uh, good to use a little bit of tape, stick that over the motor. So as it's spinning, we can figure out which way it's actually turning. Now we'll start with motor one, which should be spinning uh, anti-clockwise. So I'll just give it a quick spin. which it is spinning anti-clockwise so that's fine we'll check motor 2 which should spin uh, clockwise motor 2 is actually spinning anti-clockwise so what we need to do is pull out two of the cables from the ESC and swap them around let's try that again And now it's spinning clockwise. Okay, motor three should be spinning anti clockwise. Motor three is spinning anti clockwise, so that's fine. Motor floor four should go clockwise. Motor four is spinning counterclockwise, by it, so we need to swap two cables from the ESC. It's now spinning clockwise, so that's good. That's better. And finally, motor six sh should spin clockwise. Which it is. So it would appear that everything is working fine. Okay, so the majority of the build is now done. Got the top plate on, ESCs are zip tied on. Uh, just to make it a bit neater, I've used white zip ties on the white and red zip ties on the reds. So now we need to start putting on our uh, propellers, uh, which I'm going to do now with the 8 inches. Okay, so that's all our props on. Let's see what happens if we try and uh, take off 